Hello everyone. Today we will be starting with a new topic that is development of dicot embryo. Students, till now we have studied the process of pollination and fertilization. We have seen in case of fertilization, there is syngamy as well as the triple fusion. And the two together is called as the double fertilization. Now what has happened in syngamy? There is a formation of a zygote. And by the method of triple fusion, there is the formation of endosperm. Okay. Now we will see that what has happened to the zygote and how this zygote has developed into embryo and then seed. So the topic is development of dicot embryo. Now see what has happened till now. After the process of fertilization, we have got this zygote. Okay. Now this zygote is deployed in nature as we have already studied. One male gamete fused with one egg. And there is a formation of a zygote and the zygote is 2N in number. That is it is diploid. Okay. Now after this there will be only mitotic division. Clear? So there will be only mitotic division. And after one mitotic division we will get the structure like this. Okay. The cell will become little bit enlarged. And this is transverse division. And we get this two structure. Okay. Mitotic division, equal division of everything. So we will get this. Now, this is called as basal cell. And this is called as termin terminal cell. Okay. After the formation of zygote, this portion is towards the micropyle and this portion is towards the chalicyl end. Remember, in case of, because we have taken the anatropous ovule and in case of anatropous ovule, I have told you the structure is something like this. This is the embryo sac, this is the micropyle region and this is the chalicyl portion. Okay, so what happened? Micropyle is towards the downside and chalicyl is upside. That's why when the zygote will divide into two, the lower portion which is near the micropyle, that is which is near the micropyle, that is called as the basal cell and which is above, that is near the chalicyl end, that is called as the terminal cell. So from here I think so it is clear. Okay. Now suppose if we take the orthotropus. Then you remember the structure of the orthotropus is something like this. These are the mucellus, chalicyl end and the embryo sac is here. Now this side it is open. This is the micropyle. This is the chalicyl end. And in orth orthotropus when the division will occur then... This will be called as the basal cell and this will be called as the terminal cell. Okay, so don't get confused that the cell which is at the base that is called as the basal cell. No, the cell which is near to the micropyle that is called as the basal cell and the cell which is near to the chalicyl end that is called as the terminal cell. So in case of orthotropus, I am writing here, in case of orthotropus if the division will be there then this will be the basal and this will be the terminal but as we are discussing about normal anatropus angiospermic ovule so we will see the basal cell as well as the terminal cell in this form okay now see what is the next condition Suppose this is my basal cell, okay? 
clear now basal cell will undergo further more division okay more mitotic division once again if the mitotic division will be there then again this will change into 2 2 will change into 4 and then 4 will change into 8 so what we will see there will be the mitotic division more mitotic divisions and after mitotic division what we will see this is the terminal cell Okay, I am writing TC, terminal cell. Now, the basal cell will divide into many more divisions. 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. Now, every cell is diploid. Remember this. Every cell is diploid. Now, see what will happen after this. This divisions will give rise to the structure called as the hostoria and suspensor and this will give rise to the embryo. Okay, now this, this is our basal cell. What will happen to the basal cell? One was there, it was divided into two and two will divide into four. After one more division, See what we will get. This is the terminal cell and these are the divisions of the basal cell. The lowermost basal cell will give rise to a structure that is called as the hostorial. Okay, now see what name we can give here. This is our terminal cell. Basal cell, this is the division of the basal cell. The basal cell is divided into this structure called as suspensor. And one lowermost cell which is near to the micropyle end it will enlarge in size and now this is called as the hostorial. Okay, now see the function of the suspensor cell and hostorial. The main function of this two is to provide nutrition to the developing embryo because terminal cell will develop and it will give rise to the embryo. Now their main function is to provide nourishment number one and the second most important function okay to push the embryo into the endosperm if it will push into the endosperm then definitely it will take the nourishment and it will develop we have already studied about the development of the endosperm after triple fusion there is a formation of the endosperm primary endosperm mucellus or nucleus then that primary endosperm nucleus divides into either karyokinesis then either by the cytokinesis and then by the helloviol. So, we have already seen the endosperm is present and the function of the endosperm is to provide nutrition. So, what is the function of the suspensor as well as the ostorial? They will push the embryo. They will push the embryo so that it can easily enter into the endosperm to get the nourishment. Okay. Now, their function is clear. Function of the terminal cell is also clear that it will give rise to the embryo. Now we will see the divisions in case of terminal cell. Okay. Now we have this terminal cell. I am drawing it here. This is the terminal cell. And once again the same structure I am drawing. Terminal cell will divide. Okay. There will be the division in all the directions okay transverse longitudinal all the directions and because of that we will get a four cell clear now this four cell along with this hostorial and suspensor is called as a quadrant i am writing here this is called as now quadrant 
reason for the quadrant? Because here the terminal cell has divided and it formed a four cell. Okay, now see children. The four that I am showing you, I am showing you all the four structures here only. But actually this is not the case. What is the case? The two cells are in front and two cells are at the back side. And the structure is little bit mass like. Okay, so when we cut it one and then two, then we can so see the front two and uh, back two we cannot see. But because we want to see the division and we want to see the process, that's why I'm showing all the four in front of you only. But actually only two is visible to us and two will be behind. Okay, now see, this is the structure. The next structure, what can be happen? There will be one more division in this case. Okay, and it will give rise to eight cells. One, two, three, and then hostorial cell. Once again, nucleus I'm drawing. Once again, this is suspensor, this is hostorial, and the division is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4. It should be in the center. Okay, now. This condition is called as the quadrant. Okay. And in this situation, the cell, the terminal cell, this cell, then this, give rise to this, divide into 4, divides into 8, and it is called as octal. And now what is this? This is our pro-embryo. Because it is going to give rise the embryo and that's why it is called as the pro-embryo. So what we can call, we can give the name pro-embryo quadrant or pro-embryo octant. Okay. Now, till here it is clear. There will be one more division. Because divisions... Now, multiple cells will form. Now, this is again a mass-like structure. We are only able to see the uh, front cells. We are not able to see the cells which are at the back side. Okay? But we want to discuss the fate of all the type of division. And that's why we are seeing all the eight cells in front of us. But actually, the four is here above and four is at the back side. It is a round mass of a ball. Now, after this, there will be one more division. Where to form? I'm drawing here, okay? There will be one more division. And now the division is periclinal division. Okay, see. What is the meaning of periclinal division? This is the normal division called as the pro-embryo octron. Now, these are the suspensor cells. We will see it, this one also just now. Okay. One, one, two, three, four. Once again. Now, there will be periclinal division. And the periclinal division is something like this. Clear? Now what we have got, we have seen one structure like this and inside one more structure and the divisions of the cells are like this. Okay, see the nucleus for each. Okay, this is periclinal division. In the pro-embryo. What we can write here? This is the periclinal division. I am writing here. You should be understand this. Periclinal division. 
सी आफ्टर द पेरिक्लाइन डिविजन वी गेट दिस टाइप ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर ओके Now see what has happened. After the periclinal division, we have got outer cells. That is, we have got outer layer. Clear? And inside is called as the inner layer. Now see, this is outer layer, and inside this will be the inner layer. Okay, the outer layer will form dermatogen. I am writing here. Outer will form dermatogen, and this dermatogen outer layer will give rise to the epidermis outermost layer okay and then we have the inner layer that will give rise to the endodermis and different parts of the cell now see what happens to this suspensor and hostorial cells one of the suspensor cell will again divide transversely and then it will give rise to the four different cells see how what i am telling you i will rub this okay so that it should be clear to you that what i wanted to tell you see what happens we have got this structure okay Wait a minute. It's better to erase this also. What we have got? We have got this structure. I told you this division. Then we have seen a periclinal division. Then along with the all cells, the outer layer will give rise to dermatogen, which will give us the epidermis and this is the inner layer okay now see one of the suspensor cell will enlarge and again it will divide how it will divide it will divide into four it will divide into mass of a ball okay now this two is in front of us and two is at the back side so it will divide in the mass of a cell 3 and 4 clear now this is we oh see what is the exact structure this is one mass of a cell octreon that we have already said now one of the structure is like this from the suspensor one cell is this and other cells are lying like this okay this is the structure so this is one circle this is another mass of a ball and then we have suspensor and ostorial cell but we want to see all the structures all the uh, parts of the cell because they all will form the different different structures so we are uh, i'm showing you everything now after this come to the suspensor and hostorial cell okay clear till here it is clear now now this structure is called as hypophysis this is as usual suspensor this is as usual hostorial 
Understood? Function of this two is to provide nourishment and push the embryo towards the endosperm. This hypophysis will give rise to something else and this octal uh, will give rise to something else that is the part of the embryo. Now we will see the structure. I am again erasing all these things. Now see, we have got this structure. The, I am making this with this, okay. This is called as the hypophysis. Okay, now the lower Two of the hypophysis, lower two, this two, it will give rise to root, tip and root cap. Clear? And upper two, upper two will give rise to root cortex. Now see children, what we have seen till now, we have seen the terminal cell is going to give rise the pro-embryo and finally to the embryo. Now the terminal cell has divided, mitotically divided and give rise to the quadrant and octant and after that periclinal division. Okay. And the suspensor that was basal earlier, that suspensor will divide the topmost layer of the suspensor which is towards the terminal cell, which is towards the pro-embryo that will divide to give rise the four type of cell and it is a mass of a cell. Clear? Now, the lower four cells, which is towards the suspensor, they will give rise to the root tip and root cap. And the upper four cells of the hypophysis, which is towards the proembryo, it will give rise to root cortex. Okay? So, till here it is clear now. Now, what happens? These periclinal octal structure, pro-embryo octal structure, what it will give? The lower four of the cells. Now I am erasing this because it is clear that they are going to give the epidermis. Outer is going to give the epidermis. Okay. Inner four cells, they will give rise to hypocotyl. Okay, hypocoti and the upper is going to give rise the plumule. Plus cotyledon. Understood the structure? What we have seen? The structure is like this. I am simply making in a bigger size. Okay, I will write the name and then I will revise. This one, this one was the division, periclinal division. One of the suspensor cell divides like this. Again, it is a mass of a cell. Then the suspensor cells. And after that, hostorial cells. What has happened? The outer is giving to the epidermis finally. And inner, the lower four cells of the inner, they are giving us the 
hypocotyl and the above they are giving us the plumule plus cotyledon above means i am talking about this four cell these four cells okay make it clear and downside four cells they are giving us the hypocotyl okay and what is the fate of these cells the lower two they are giving us root tip plus root cap what is the fate of these cells they are giving us the root cortex okay this is as usual suspensor and hostorial to push everything into the endosperm so that they can get the nourishment now till here the structure is 100% clear what to do now what will be the next step 